So by now you guys know I like to go on places like eBay and search around for any system that I think I can get and we can try to fix up if it's broken. And I came across one, I thought it was kind of funny. I wasn't 100% sure if it really was broken, but I went ahead and picked it up and it wasn't a terrible price. It was a 64 console, it was like $25. I thought it'd make for a fun project to try to fix it. But the picture that they showed was a little strange because if you take a look at it, you can probably figure out why it wasn't playing any games. I mean, just take a look right here, yep. Now, why don't you think this Nintendo 64 is playing any games as they're showing there? Yeah, it's, it's missing a jumper pack or an expansion pack. And a lot of times what happens is, it's something we, we learned a while ago, even when uh, running stores, is that sometimes like large lots of consoles will be bought from like a storage locker or something like that, right? A store going out of business somewhere around there. And a lot of times the 64s, for some reason, they don't have like a jumper pack or an expansion pack in it and people just don't know. They don't know that it, that it, it needs that to function. So here is the 64 that was in that uh, listing and you can see it here says, powers on, won't play games. And it did indeed come just like this with no jumper pack or expansion and no cover here. Also looks like it's seen better days, right? I don't even know what this is, but uh, it's certainly been uh, kind of roughed up a bit all the way around. It does have this cover on the bottom though, which is good. But otherwise it looks like it's completely intact. Like the front still has all of the plastics here. Of course, the jewels there and all of that. So I don't know if that is the issue, but when I saw this, I just kind of laughed because it's something I've run into like a million times at this point. And I thought, hey, we'll pick it up, see if that is the issue on the 64 and take the lid off and open it up and clean it up really, really nicely. So this 64 is fortunate. I do have an extra expansion pack, so we'll get the nice uh, extra bit of RAM there. So we'll pop this right in there. And I even have a, a little stock cover for it as well, just some extra pieces. So technically now it is complete. And I noticed the reset button, and the power button are not sticky really either. I'll still clean them, but that's a plus as well, as usually this will be kind of like stuck down or something. For how beat up it is, I was a little surprised about that, but I got I got a power cord, I have some AV cables and a controller. Let's, let's see if it works. So I grabbed Tony Hawk Pro Skater, the cool blue cartridge. Figure we'll test that out, see how it does. Pop that in there. I have it running through a USB to AV. This is, of course, we just put the expansion pack in. So there's expansion pack found right there. That is good, okay. Well, at least it's booting. Let's uh, let's go into the game, make sure it runs. Cause sometimes you'll see a 64, it'll like freeze up. And that could be from like overheating, for example. So see if I can play it okay from the side here. Yeah, it looks like it's playing fine here. I'm about a minute into the run right now. It hasn't frozen or done anything crazy to me. It, se it seems to be working well. It's kind of hard to see from here on this side, but it is at least running fine. So good news there, I guess. I guess it was just the expansion pack. You know, like I said, you, sometimes you just get lucky. It's eBay, it's, it's, you never know what you're gonna get half the time, but sometimes it would happen occasionally. You just get, you just get lucky with a system. Uh, I guess they just didn't know or they didn't test it really without, with an expansion pack or a jumper pack and they figured it was just broken. So like I said, it would happen occasionally and we would luck out with it, but I guess we can still open it up, clean it up and it was just a, a, a pretty good purchase for a 64 on eBay, I guess. Well, I guess we can get rid of this little sticker for now. This can come off. I guess that's from the employee or whoever tested it. So there you go. Uh, but if we flip it over, of course, we have game bit screws down here. You see the game bit driver of some kind. I am also going to go ahead and just pop that expansion pack back out that I dropped in. And there's probably not gonna be a ton of cleaning really even necessary. Sure, we have the top cover. The bottom cover looks all right though. And depending on what we have inside, I might just need to just really clean up this top cover and we'll make it look nice and uh, nice and clean, nice and new, hopefully, or as new as we can. Now this is the moment of truth with all the screws out and we have the top here to see if there's any bugs inside. It's, it's eBay, you never know, right? There could still be some in there and it, and it just works. So here we go. Uh, no, not really. It just looks dirty right here where the heat sink is. That's this whole thing on the front, obviously is all heat sink. Uh, there might be some debris here from uh, from some bugs at some point, but no, nothing crazy inside. Like I said, I've seen some 
really, really bad systems. In fact, there's not much to have to do here other than just scrub this with a brush, like a toothbrush. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this under some warm water and soap, especially in kind of the crevices here, right? And we should be able to get that out with a brush and I'll pop these out. So if you have like a stuck reset button or even a power button, these just pop out. So they have like these tabs, you kind of squeeze them together and you push. And what'll happen is the button will come out of the other side and you can just dump this just dunk that in some uh, pool of warm water and some soap. Let that soak while you're cleaning the rest of the system. And then you come back and you lift it out and it'll drop right back in nice and new and it'll have that nice clicking feel and for the rest reset button, have a nice push. Also our cover right here is just screwed in with two screws. I'm gonna remove that because there's a spring inside of here and I mostly just wanna get plastic, like the plastics uh, cleaned with some water, soap and water. I don't really feel like dumping screws and springs and stuff in there alongside of it. So very easy. And technically you can just remove this completely and that'll give you the ability to easily play things like uh, like like Japanese based N64 games. So it's not region lock, quote unquote. The region lock were just, was just different plastic is all. And that's how it worked because they had tabs that were a little different. Now the heat sink here, I'm just gonna try to wipe away any of the obvious surface level stuff that's just sitting on top of it just like this, just to get all the dust and dirt off of here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and get some alcohol and just spray it right on there, light amount, and then just go in here and we'll just scrub all of this out. The nice thing about some of these older systems is because the top will come off with a couple of screws and you can then kind of remove the shell and clean that, they're very easy to clean. Like it doesn't take long to do so, only a few screws most of the time, compared to newer systems that take quite a while just to get all the plastics apart and then decide what you're gonna be able to clean. This was so much easier. So I got done scrubbing down the top shell and I think it came out pretty good. I just got, to, it was just under the sink, finishing uh, rinsing it off after I scrubbed it really well with that brush. And the best part about using a brush on some of this stuff, and a lot of people go crazy with like the magic eraser, like right away, just try some warm soap and water. You might be surprised to see how, just how well it works. Uh, for example, that like that blue mark that was on here is gone now. Everything in the Nintendo logo is completely cleaned out. That brush, just this brush here just will really help. It's just basic soft bristle toothbrush and it'll get into a lot of the spaces. This is still kind of wet down here, but all of the dirt and the dust that was in there is all out as well. And for the most part, just all the way around, it looks way cleaner. Of course we have, I think still a little bit of what, nope, that's gone too. All of that, there was like that white mark there. It's still gonna take a minute to dry, but like right away you can see just how different it looks just with some warm water and soap. So try that out on one of your systems if it looks kind of dirty. And then of course we have our power and reset button. What I did was as I was cleaning this, I just let these soak in some soap and water and we can just drop them right in. It's gonna be basically the same because they weren't too bad. But if there was like a lot of gunk in here, and trust me, these went through some hard times, right? It'll, it'll make them work so much better. They'll feel much more free and just overall cleaner. So good to get kind of all the gunk out that may have been in between these two crevices here. At that point, all we have to do is put the dust covers back into place, attach the piece that holds those on, and then just put the top cover back on the system. And we should have a really good looking Nintendo 64 system that I guess just need an expansion pack and a bit of a cleaning. Now I will say most times on eBay, when you find a system that says not working, it, there's probably something really wrong with it. But I do keep seeing 64s pop up that just don't have expansion packs attached to them or jumper packs. So I don't know, maybe there's a bunch of these things getting listed where the people don't know that you need one. I, I It's happened before, like I said, when we were shopping around for them, but most times it was in person and the, they didn't know you were supposed to test with it and all this, and they just wanted to get rid of them. And it was just console only. So you still had to get a controller, the power cable, the AV cables, all that stuff together just to sell it. But I mean, we would get 64s for like $10 a piece console only. So you could still, we could still make something from it because uh, we would sell games and stuff with them as well. But I guess keep an eye out for 64s that don't have a jumper pack or an expansion pack in it in the listing on eBay. You know what? I'm pretty happy though how this came out based on how it was when it showed up to now it looks way better. I think there's like this line here, this white line. I think that's just a scratch actually into the plastic. Can't do much about that one. But what it looked like before to what it looks like now, 
way, way better. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in one last time and we'll put a game on. I guess we'll try Star Fox this time, right? We'll see how that does on this one. Yeah, there we go. So, not bad. I would say, on occasion, you get lucky on eBay. It happens, right? Like, they'll throw you a bone. You notice something in a listing and you're like, wait, I think it's just this little thing. And it was. It was an expansion pack or a jumper pack. Drop that in there. The person wasn't testing with it, I guess. And boom, a working Nintendo 64. Also, you get to clean it up and it looks way better afterwards and you have a working system. So, hey, if I guess if you run across these on eBay, maybe that's the one to take a chance on. It's still eBay. You're rolling the dice because there could be other problems. One of the controller ports could not be working. Uh, it could be over overheating and then you might run into something like water damage. These are all things that are very possible that you can't necessarily tell in the listing photos. This just happened to be a good pickup on eBay for me. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Like do a lot of these different tech wave videos on the weekends, generally on Sunday. And we'll look at retro systems and even newer ones. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.